Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Prince of Investing right here with your host, the Prince of Investing, Prince Dyke, coming all the way live from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado, via Honolulu, Hawaii. But as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're definitely going to jump straight into it. So this is a topic that I picked. We're going to talk about the Robinhood app. If you don't know what the Robinhood app is, the Robinhood app is a, uh, a app. Essentially, it is an app that you can trade, buy, and sell stock, right? I get a lot of reviews about it. People have asked me about it and other things like that, right? Prince, what do you think about the Robinhood app? What's the good? What's the bad? Things like that. So what I'm going to do in this video and what I'm going to do and the people that catch the audio version of podcasts across the globe, what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about the pros of, um, of the Robinhood app, the cons of Robinhood app, and that's pretty much it. We're going to keep it short, short, sweet, and simple and to the point. And we're also going to talk about, of course, what it is. So first, let's talk about what is the app. The app itself is an app you can download to your phone, and you can use it to purchase stock. So people who are just starting to buy stock, people who want to get into stock, the first thing you must do, if you want individual stock, the old school days, you can call a broker. And I'm pretty sure there are brokers out there now that you can call and buy stock. But most people, most of the millennials, people that are, you know, in my age range of 33 or whatnot, is most people use an online broker, someone like an E-Trade, a TD Ameritrade, a Scott Trade, a place where you go, set up an account, fund it, put money into it, and, put, and uh, buy a particular stock. So with Robinhood, Robinhood is one of those, and it has the app. Just about every desktop form of an online broker, there is an app version. So Robinhood mostly focuses on the app. You can just pick up your handy-dandy phone, download the app, and boom, start purchasing stock. But before you purchase the stock, you must fund the account just like everything else, fill out an application, fund the account, then you can go off and buy stock. Now we're going to talk about one of the, I want to say about three good things about the Robinhood app. The first thing is it's easy, convenient. You can download it right now while we're talking, and by the time I finish this video, you can probably already have requested an account, right? So that's a good thing. The convenience is right there on your phone. One of the, the second things is it's great for people that are just starting to invest in because it has no account minimum, no minimum account. You don't have to have fifty. You don't have to start with five hundred dollars or three hundred dollars or whatever the case may be, or whatever the thing, uh, whatever the case may be, and you can just start right away. You can start funding it with ten dollars, twenty dollars, thirty dollars, and now you have an account. Once you have enough money in your account, you can go off and buy a particular stock. Now the third thing is um, commission. Commissions. Think about it. How do stockbrokers make money? That's a question you should ask anybody in the financial industry because you might discover some things. How do you make money? When we say a, uh, a broker, for example, how does a broker make money? When you call up a broker, you want to buy 10 shares of Amazon stock. When it goes in and processes it, it adds a little fee on it. When you uh, buy an insurance policy, there's a commission for an insurance agent. When you buy a car from a car dealer, there's an insurance, there's a commission, just like a, when you buy a house from a real estate agent, and so on and so on, right? So Robinhood, it doesn't have any commissions. Don't ask me how they do this. I don't know. I don't know if it's, they make their money through advertising or whatever the case may be, but they have no commission. Right now, we live in a very, very low fee market with like TD Ameritrade. TD Ameritrade only costs us about five or six bucks, so does E-Trade. Or the lowest one I think on the market is Charles Schwab at four or five bucks. But anyway, Robinhood lets you do it for free. When you go to buy Forest stock, you can buy it particularly for free. So look at the top three things, right? Easy to start, easy to buy, you know, uh, easy to start, no account minimum, and you can um, you have no commissions. You don't have to pay any fees. So that's the biggest thing, the no commission, because. They started with no commission when everybody else was charging about 10 bucks. So that's a definitely a big plus because we know those fees, they add up over time. Now, but with everything that's good, there also are some bad things. Some of the bad things about Robinhood. One of the bad things is that the limits that it has. You know, you can't buy everything on it. It doesn't have every mutual fund. It doesn't have every ETF. It doesn't allow you to do everything. Now, I know at one time they, explore, um, they have upgraded to options. That was very cool. But you can't do futures. Um, you also don't have. Um, you also don't have. 
access to certain mutual funds, for for example, right? And also with that, it brought in cryptocurrencies not too long ago. But when it brought in the cryptocurrencies, you can monitor Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, but it only will let you buy them if you were like in certain states or something like that. So it has a little bit limit. It has some limits on what you can buy and what's open to the market. But it has all the basic stuff. You could go in there and buy majority of your stocks, majority of ETFs, stuff like that. But there are limits. You don't get every single thing, right? Now, another thing is when you look at the uh, another downside to it is the platform itself. You know, there's only so much analytical tools I can do with my particular phone. Yes, I can look at the price. I can look at the highs. I can look at the lows. I can look at a simple chart. But when I, if I want to do some comparisons and things like that, if I want to use these um, tools to compare fees and to compare performance and to compare things on a chart, Robinhood is just not there from what I've seen on the app. That's when things like E-Trade and TD Ameritrade and, you know, other Charles Schwab platforms – start to shine because I can pull up my nice little laptop or iPad or whatnot, compare, contrast, add a fee, see how things perform, look at nice little pie charts because, you know, I like nice little pie charts and bar charts and bar charts because it makes it smart for me. But with uh, Robinhood, you just don't have that, right? So you don't have the analytical tools and things like that. You kind of go to that notion, you kind of get what you pay for. But TM Trade and E-Trade and you, uh, uh, all these other brokers, they have an app version as well. They have an app version, and you have more news and things like that. But the gist of it, the apps are about the same. But when you look at doing those deep-down analyticals and um, like a lot of tutorials you see here on the show and on the YouTube channel, you don't have those with Robinhood. So those are, the, those are the pros and cons of the Robinhood app. It's very popular right now. Now, granted, you have other apps out there like Stash. You have other apps out there like Acorn where they're great. If you are investing, you're doing good, right? But can you do better and can you do, you know, it's always good, better investing, good, better, and best in investing. So when you are investing, that's great. I mean, that's good. But could it be better? Yes. Could it be the best? Of course. But when I looked at the Stash app, what I didn't like about it is some of the mutual funds that it was throwing people in that was riddled with high fees that they, you know, I didn't see them offering a broad-based index. I think that a lot of people, a lot of amateur and new investors should put the bulk of their funds until they learn more and things like that. So that's the cool, that's the um, um, great part about it. So, you know, one of the good parts about the, um, about the Robinhood app went over the bad part. Me personally, I don't use the Robinhood app. Why I don't use the Robinhood app? Because I can get all of that same information with uh, an E-Trade or TD Ameritrade. And the bulk of the stuff that I buy are no commission ETFs. And what I mean by no commission ETF, no commission. So if it has no commission, one of the biggest things that drew me to Robinhood was trading without no commissions. Whoa, that stuck out. But if I can get no commissions over at TD Ameritrade with some of the index funds that I purchased, huh, or whatnot. But is it a good app? Of course it is. It's a great app because it's charging you no commission. That's the biggest thing. That's the biggest plus. One of the biggest downfalls, the analytics, right? But if you're someone that are new that just want to buy some Nike stock or you just want to buy some Amazon stock or whatever the case may be, you can download the app, fill out an application. Once you have your application, you fund it from your checking, banking, however you want to fund your account. You put the money in your account, and boom, you can start investing the day. So that's my review of the Robinhood app. People ask me if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't personally use it, but it is a good app. And I hope that helped you guys out. But as always, my name is Prince Dykes. That's your review of the Robinhood app. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, comment, share button, and follow us. And also check out us out and check out some of our cool stuff in the description box. Until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or the next episode you see around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.